this software. So hold on. Can you hear well, me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. The uh, link you gave me through the email it said not downloaded to the server. There was no information with the email at all. Oh, all right. So I'll so. send it from. So I had to. We're not live yet because the YouTube part's not live. Yeah. Um, but I had to pay a hundred bucks a month, a year for extra storage on the cloud and to get this feature so I can stream a meeting from this to YouTube. You have to uh, pay you have to pay somewhere to use it. That's why I wanted to do it last year with you guys or two years ago during the pandemic with everybody and I just I didn't know how to do it. I didn't want to spend the money. So So you're streaming multiple different platforms? Is that what you're saying? Uh, right now it's just gonna be hopefully it's just gonna be YouTube when the clock ticks eight o'clock. Um which I should start sharing this around here on my um, is that my my camera uh, bright enough? Yeah, you're good. You're good. Okay. Just your cell phone, I'm guessing. Yeah, I, I just got it on a little tripod. Nice. Yeah, just uh, Christmas tree lights and uh, one little dinky lamp. So. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, mine's just uh, light reflecting off the wall here, and Remy's trying to go to sleep in the wall, this wall behind me here. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> We just barely put back back into bed, so he's not sleeping yet, obviously. Yeah. Uh, shit. There we go. I can share it on both platforms. This should go should go live. <laughs> Every time I do one of these, I do something like different, so it doesn't always work. Either I schedule ahead of time, or use. If you schedule it on your phone, then it won't go to your computer. Like you have to yeah. set it up with the good microphone and and all that jazz. I think I'm on the good. I'm not sure what microphone I'm using right now. As long as as long as I sound good, I'm using the good microphone. Yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay, all right. We should be live. Let's check. You might need headphones on, by the way. Do you have headphones? Um, I can go grab them. Can you give me a second? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. It might, it might have a backlash. Not backlash, but a All right, hold on. feedback. I know I can do better. <laughs> this is software, so hold on. How's it going, everybody? The link you gave me through the email said not All right, we are we are back, guys. Um, and John just left the meeting. <laughs> hold on. Um. Let's do something cool here. Oh, let's just do no, no backgrounds. All right, I don't know what happened there, but we got people uh, chatting with us. We got a uh, Detroit River Master. New subscriber, thanks for subscribing. I've been watching my videos for a couple of weeks. That's fantastic. Thank you for, uh, thanks for watching. And I'm uh, watching myself back onto my phone here. And uh, hopefully we're streaming with uh, with the YouTube. You hear me all right still? Yeah, I can hear you. So uh, for those who are new, new to the channel, uh, I'm Josh. I've been to fishing. I do a lot of ice fishing stuff, and I've been strictly doing Lakers for um, pretty much all this summer. And I want to introduce you guys to Woods and Weeds Outdoors. we got nine people on right now. This is uh, my cousin John taught me a lot about, not everything about fishing. I teach him sometimes too. Uh, he's got a channel called Woods and Weeds Outdoors. He's got about, what, 700 subscribers? About 700, yeah. I can barely hear you, so... I don't know what's better. Audio. Um, I tried to put it on um, headphones and it cut you out and I lost. Oh, okay. So, can you hear me now? Huh? Can you hear me now? No. I mean, I can hear you, but it's really light. Okay, let's turn. I don't I know. Else, else. Is, but... is, that, is that better or no? No. Better or worse? Let me just check, make sure everything's up. Yeah. It's better or worse? All right, hold on. Let me go. 
we're, we're right. new to this double again. live thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh, it's interesting. Let me see if I need to go into different audio settings here. Uh, how's the audio, guys? For those who aren't on the on the live here, John, including. I am gonna go. You still talking? Yeah, I'm still talking. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. I'm just trying to try different things here, see if it works. Micro different microphone. I can stuff. hear you fine. I can I can hear you fine. Yeah, you can hear me fine. It's weird. I I think what happened is my microphone picked up my wireless. It picked me off, and then uh, I think it's still trying to go through microphone somehow. But I don't know. Yeah, we hey. get we. I mean, we got time to stop, so we're just. Uh... I'm trying to look up your 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 website here. Your uh, I am subscribed. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is woodsandweeds.org. He's my cousin. Uh, he's in the Vermont side of things, but he comes over to uh, to tackle our uh, our first ice uh, brook trout and rainbows and browns and stuff like that. We have a good program here in New Hampshire. Uh, we've got a few people on. We got Circle Tackle, Matt Chamberlain, Detroit River Master which is awesome. John keeps getting kicked off some technical difficulties. This is the first time we're doing this double live thing. Um, I was just checking my volume. I, was, I had to go to a different screen real quick. I, I could barely hear you, but I, I'll just try to listen really well. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it's weird. Maybe it's canceling out the feedback on your end. That's kind of weird. Um, I don't know if I can do anything on my end. I, I doubt it, but let me check. Yeah, so we're we're um, literally just here chatting chatting about ice fishing. Um, Detroit River Masters just uh, subscribed to you, John. Uh, so you're at 690. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna try to go ahead and put these uh, wireless in real quick. Yeah, I'll see if that works. I'll be I'll be right back. Okay, hold on, guys. So yeah, Just I'll keep talking. Really well. No, no, no. <laughs> How's it going, Bruce? Uh, we're having some technical difficulties. We're trying to get my cousin. I got you now. Perfect. Is that better? I hear perfect now, yeah. For some reason, they picked up and then um, picked me off, and then I just put them back in, and now it's working, so we're good. All right. All right, good. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to be switching. Um, this is new software to me, so we're kind of switching back and forth. It depends on who's talking. Uh, and there is a 20-second delay between um, when we're talking and when we're answering questions. So uh, I want you guys to ask as many ice fishing questions as possible. We're kind of just chilling, uh, just having a... Um, this is a, a down time of year for a lot of people, but uh, both John and I, a lot of our content does extremely well during ice fishing season. So I am full speed ahead when and if we have ice. So we just got, uh, I was just standing on five inches of ice Sunday night, Sunday afternoon, came back Monday afternoon and was open water on a big part of the lake because we just had really bad weather. So, so nothing, yeah, I heard about nothing we can do about that. I heard a little bit about that place you asked me about earlier, and I heard people are fishing it, so that might be a possibility for this weekend for me or whatever. So. Okay, my uh, my first one of my first ice fishing videos is filmed up there. Yeah, I'm um, gonna see if we can do see if we can do split screen here, show and tile here. Ah, hopefully that'll work. I don't know if it's gonna. Uh, yeah, whoever was whoever was watching here, can you see both of us at the same time? I don't know if that's true or not. I can. There's a delay on on the end there. Um, I'm also trying to look at the camera and trying to look at talk into the microphone and and manage this thing. But yeah, I've been wanting to do this for about actually probably since the pandemic. Uh, I never got around to it, and not last year, the previous year, um, I was on with you guys once a week chatting about live streaming. So. I just haven't got around to it this year. Um, yeah, I didn't get around to it last year. We had really crappy ice last year. Uh, I had to save someone last year. All that kind of, all that kind of good fun stuff. Um, but yeah, what do you got plans for this year, John? For ice uh, well, that I don't already know about. Probably the same as you. A lot of lake trout fishing, hopefully. But you know, it's the problem is with my area is. Um, there's not a whole heck of a lot of places that you can't go to Champlain. Uh, and, well, for decent sized ones. So, I don't know. <laughs> Other than that, I, I'm trying to, I'm going to try to stay away from the 
perch and panfish type stuff this year because I just I just don't enjoy it as much anymore. Yeah, <laughs> and, I, I uh, get it. I don't really care, to, care to sell them like people do around here. That's a good thing about New Hampshire is not having that market. And I think it really hurts a lot of our fisheries in Vermont with these people pulling out two two hundred pounds a day or whatever, fifty to two hundred pounds a day and selling them and at first, you think it's not going to be, you know, be a factor, but then <laughs> the same person goes three, four times a week, and then their buddies are going, and then next thing you know, there's thousands of pounds out of a body of water in a month. So I've I've noticed a decline at, even at Champlain, which is you know 270,000 acre lake. So, yeah. Yeah. So the the uh, commercials, the whole state, right? You can commercial fish everywhere in the state. Yeah, you can, but and then Champlain is pretty much unlimited for perch, panfish, crappie. Oh, oh, oh. crappie That's the only one has them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but as far as, if you want to go in there with perch, panfish, you know, like bluegill and pumpkin seed, you can just sit there and throw as much as you, you want, basically. And yeah, and them, it's very easy to catch, obviously, so you can just fill them. I remember days 10 years ago, just one after another all day long. But now, those same places, you, you know, you might get 20 fish in a day. Those are panfish. <laughs> you know, it's like crazy. Yeah, I mean, that's that's unfortunate. And I've done the commercial fishing in Vermont. It's super fun to go, like, to white perches and invasive species on Champlain. Um, where in New Hampshire, they're, like, highly praised. And they're, like, 16, 17 inches because of the smelt population here in Winnie. Um and it's super fun to catch a bunch and then drag them and basically pay for your gas money. But there's a lot of retired folks, like you were saying, that go out there and absolutely slay fish all winter long. They don't claim any income. Like that's that's their source of income for the winter time. And you know, it's great, but it shouldn't be on, you know, the small ponds that I used to fish. And then you wonder why all the crappy. Like I've seen guys catch crappy that are this big. Yeah. in vermont and keep them and bring them and like go sell them i don't know if that's legal but they, i don't know what they were doing with them but uh yeah crappy or like you said there's a limit on those but they're you know the, the money for them I, I last time i knew it was like three four dollars a pound whole not even cleaning them so that's going to make people want them even more which is kind of a negative effect for the fishery you, you, you know you raise the price the people are going to want to go get those fish more more than the you know, perch at like 70, 80 cents a pound. So, but, yeah, that's just crazy. Yeah. I, I, look, the other thing though is the white perch being invasive. You know, I don't, uh, I don't mind that people going in there and hammering them, but, uh, I don't know. They've kind of found their way into Champlain and a few other places, anyways. And they're, they're here to stay. So, taking a thousand pounds out of there, it's not going to matter. There's two, there's a male and a female left. It doesn't matter. <laughs> right? Yeah. No. They'll. They'll. They're prolific breeders. Um, I've done some research on them just because of the population here on uh, Winnipesaukee and stuff like that. And there's, I now with forward-facing sonar, like you could not find them before. With forward-facing sonar, you can just freaking pan around and like, oh yeah, there they are. Go drill a hole quietly and, and just get right on top of them, which yeah. is pretty cool. Uh, I can't imagine going to where we we go for white perch at Champlain. Yeah. With a forward face, it would be incredible. Just imagine yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, seeing football fields. And you just, like you just said, you just saw a football field of uh, white birch before the, uh, before you put your boat away. I mean, that's, that's yeah. unheard of here in New Hampshire. It was a football field long. And I never measured how wide it was because I was actually on my way to a spot, but I did stop and figure out what they were, drop shotting them. And uh, it was probably, 20 feet thick from bottom to 20 feet up and the football field long. Jeez. Yeah. So if someone wanted a commercial fish, that's definitely a spot to go. <laughs> yeah, we could, we could definitely fill up, fill up my boat to where, you know, you're going to have to worry about sinking the damn thing. Cause it's all year, right? I mean, most people just do it during ice fishing season, but a lot of people do it from the bridges and stuff. Yeah. So the thing is, if you're going to sell the fish, they're going to want them on ice if you're in the summer months. Oh, true. Um, yeah, so, you know, you get, you get your ice. And to me, you know, I don't know. 
I have a different perspective on it now. But back a few years ago, I was like, well, if I lived close to the lake, it'd be worth going out for a day and whatever. But now, you know, I definitely can't do it now, being an hour and a half from the lake, back and forth, pulling a truck, a boat. Yeah. And then you make, yeah. you make 60 bucks and spend 120 just to get up there and back. And there's no sense in doing it anyway. Yeah, that's that's not cost effective. And I, I've heard of people doing taking the the white perch from New Hampshire and bringing them to, to uh, Vermont and selling them because they're just massive. Um, oh. I'm trying to do. Hold on one second. I'm trying to do both of us on the same screen here because right now it's just auto switching between the two, and I don't know how to do that. So let me give me one second. But uh, yeah, I got some. Uh, I got a guy from Canada, the Detroit River Master. Says yellow perch is twenty five dollars a pound in Canada. Is that that's crazy high, is that isn't fillets? it? Is that fillets, though? That's probably fillets or skinned and, and uh, gutted heads off. Uh, yeah, I'm guessing so. We don't have silver bass. That's one of the one of the questions here. We just have white perch, um, which, depending on who you talk to, not who you talk to, uh, white perch is an anadr not an I guess it's an anadromous. There are white perch in the ocean that are landlocked here. That's why they're kind of native here, but they're invasive in Vermont because there was no way to get in there before we started messing with the locks to go up to the St. Lawrence um, area. So we have them in the ocean and people fish for them in the ocean yeah. all the time here. So there's a lot in the brackish waters, like, you know, like yeah. you know, the rivers going into the oceans and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, this guy, Bruce is asking about what, what bridge um, do you access? So wondering at, so I've always wanted to fish Champlain. I so I was wondering at the bridge, do you go south or north? Two and a half hour drive, so I need to know where to start. Uh, I'll, let, I'll let you answer that question, John, depending on what bridge, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about Champlain Bridge, Southern Bridge, down by Crown Point. Um, and is this person, what, what kind of fish is this person trying to get? I'm guessing they're talking Lakers if they're on my channel. He's new to the channel. I would just, I would just say, so, yeah. So Lakers at the bridge, you can definitely fish a little bit south of the bridge because um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it when, and later in the winter, just because you don't get as many for sure. Um, but when the ice just starts, that it definitely freezes south of the bridge much earlier than north of the bridge. So a lot of people will fish south of the bridge for the Lakers, and it's kind of super random. So you don't really set up in uh, like a, an area, like a point. You don't set up on a hump or anything like that. It's super random. It's just about calling in the fish, and maybe you might get lucky and get four or five in a day. But once the ice, you know, gets better, uh, definitely north of the bridge, all the way up to, I would go all the way up to. Colchester, Mallet's Bay area would be probably the most north I'd even go. But again, that area up there freezes like once every five years. So that's tough. So even north of the bridge, a mile north of the bridge freezes just about every year. Anything more than that, three to five years. You, you can't even get on that part of the uh, part of the lake. And you know, unless you get a a week worth of negative 20 degree weather to lock it up. Yeah, and that and has it goes, a, once it goes or once it's there, it goes quick too if we have a couple warm days. So yeah, but yeah, definitely yeah. north, definitely north of the bridge. And you have a few videos, Josh, of that, and I have a few too. We put out back when your channel first started that they're actually really good videos, the clear ice ones there. And it's too bad that. You know, when we first started, we had such good videos back in the day, but now yeah. people kind of don't go back and look at some of those videos. No, yeah, if you guys want to go back and, and either search, um, <laughs> if you search Lake Trout on my channel, there's going to be a ton of Lake Trout content, and same with same with John's, uh, but go back, probably, actually, probably one of my, I think my first, it's probably my my first Lake Trout was Lake Champlain, hooked one on Champlain, I've been addicted ever since. And then we had some really cool. Um, I, I wish we had underwater I, underwater camera back then. And it would have been really really cool. Even the GoPro under the water would have been sick. Um, got a question from uh, the tr Detroit guy, and it was fillets for the twenty five dollars a pound. That's that's a lot of money. Seven or eight dollars a pound here. 
up to 10 maybe sometimes or something. Yeah, and then uh, what's our lure of choice for Lakers through the ice? Uh, yeah. Do you use Megs with a tube on it? Um, so I I use I make and sell my own jigs and uh, plastic baits. So I'm a swim swim bait guy, and then I just started making tubes. And uh, John can talk about what he uses. He uses a lot of hard hard bait stuff. Yeah, I, I do a little of everything. So I used to make baits. So primarily use swim baits that I made. They're almost identical to the um, Kitex, the 3.8s is what I used to use a lot. And I used to custom color, I used custom colors that I made. Um, when I'm trying to call in fish or rattle trap, I use a rattle trap a lot, uh, especially when the bite is really bad. Like if, if you're having a struggle for the day, you haven't seen any fish for a while, sometimes you throw that, or you don't throw it, you drop down that uh, rattle trap and they just come right in. It's just, it's crazy. You could not see a fish for an hour sometimes. You drop that down and all of a sudden they're there. So the rattle trap, a swim bait, sometimes a spoon, but I find that a spoon, uh, you miss a lot of fish because it's like a darting action and the fish miss it, you miss it. But Agreed. It be fun it's, it's really fun to watch them swipe at it. But if you, if you want to hook up more often, it's a swim bait and I'll throw a tube sometimes. A swim bait for me just works so much better. I just don't know what it is. And uh, I've tried a few other things here and there that, you know, anything that moves quick and is shiny, it's going to work. It's just a matter of, you know, preference, I guess, for a lot of it. But hair jigs work really good, too. Like uh, Spro makes a, a big hair jig. It's got a big old... Yeah, the like bucktail, right? Yeah, the bucktail, either a quarter to all the way up to like two ounce. I've seen. I think I have a couple two ounce ones. But uh, I find that 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 bait there also, uh, I won't get as many strikes on it. I don't know if it's just too big or what, but and I'll even tip it with a swim bait sometimes. It's just a bigger profile. I guess if the fish were bigger, like you know, I don't know. I don't even think I've caught anything under ten pounds on it when I've used it. But that's a good thing if that's what you want. If you just want the big bite and <laughs> you don't want to deal with all the six to eight pounders, but what's no, you know, that's no fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's true. And you know, I've been talking to uh, another bait maker up actually in Vermont um, about his his baits. He's got vertical two baits. And, you know, it's it's a really big difference. So Champlain, Champlain's over here, and we have Sebago over here, and so both of those lakes have huge uh, bait in them called alewives um, that are native, not native to Champlain and not native to Sebago. They were stocked in Sebago, but they get, you know, I actually caught one, a, a lake trout spit out one that was this big this year. And I thought they were smelt when we were seeing them on live scope all the way up. The biggest one you've seen is what, 12 inches or something like that? Uh, maybe even bigger, like 15. There was one uh, frozen in the ice one day. I was walking across and a little guy and we drilled around it pop it out and it was it was like as big as american chat like you know it was yeah they they get huge and you know Cham champlain has white fish and and burbot and champlain has everything a laker could ever want but for the main part it's 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 uh al white that are eating um and someone's asking what are we doing to call these lakers in i mean we're, we're banging bottom and we're going up and down the water column well, for the mo both of us use um you know some sort of live imaging uh, or forward facing sonar. He's a he's a Lawrence guy. I'm a Garmin guy. Um, well, I just happen to have Lawrence. I don't know if I'm a Lawrence <laughs> guy. <laughs> but, <laughs> Lawrence, you know, but your boat was your boat came with Lawrence, right? Your other one was Simrad, right? Boat did, yeah, I had four 12 inch lives on it, so it's kind of. I mean, if I want to spend fifteen thousand, switch over to Garmin. I know. <laughs> you know what I, mean? but I do believe that definitely Garmin is a superior product right now, for sure. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna get the active target too this spring. So I thought you already got it. I only have the one. Oh, okay. So I mean, when we're lake trout fishing in the summer, I really start losing them after about 60, 70 feet. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I can see the fish sometimes, but I'm not gonna see my bait. And uh, so the active target too is supposed to really get me down, you know, 100 to 120 or so, or whatever. We'll see if it makes a difference. 
Yeah, it definitely should. Because uh, I was seeing with with down mode, I was seeing down to like a hundred and twenty with live scope plus, and then XR, I'm down to like three. I can see yeah. Lake Trout three hundred and twenty feet away, but it's an expensive expensive sonar. But I have haven't used XR in the ice yet. I plan on taking a bit take a video of that using it for crappy and having someone like drill like 300 feet away and catch a crappy. Yeah. Um, hopefully you and I can do that soon here if we get some freaking ice. So yeah, about the um, calling and calling the fish in. So, I mean, you do this obviously too, and I don't know something you saw from me or if you knew it before or whatever, but making a lot of noise on the, on top of the water, either splashing like your fishing pole or using your auger to, you know, spit out in a hole with your auger, just gurgling water, basically. And it's, it kind of works with a lot of different species, like, um, like in Europe, and they use it to call in wells catfish, doing that stuff. So you oh, yeah. Use like a thing. And it's, it gets them interested. And uh, it's the same thing with the battle trap. So if I haven't seen a fish in a while, and you're, you know, you're 10 feet away from me while I'm fishing in the shanty, you might hear something really <laughs> weird sounding. You just can hear the drill going off in my hole gargling up water and then you put it away and then magically they show up it's, it's pretty interesting it's it's pretty crazy and what people don't realize so i learned i learned that from you and i, I well i think i learned it from you and i kind of like put it together myself and then there's a um i think it's yellow dog or white dog guide service i think they're a guide service on lake george they did a video about it too and i've actually done it with my boat if i'm on a good good spot i'm on a reef or something like that and it's been stale for like i don't know 10 15 minutes i will literally just i got a uh, tiller motor i'll put that thing in neutral and just rev the hell out of it bounce it off the rev limiter and then just wait and they'll come screaming in it's kind of ridiculous um i got a guy that says uh, i live near in sunapee and do well for lakers on a white tube i got your winnie oh i just got an ad um and just grab some of your tubes can't wait to try them also, I grind up chum. Yeah, we both chum a lot. Um, I didn't as much last year as I normally do because I, I, with the snow dog and stuff, I bounce around quite a bit. Um, and I didn't didn't really stay in any good spot. I didn't could, could even access my good spot last year on on Winnie just because the ice was so crap, and I didn't feel like walking three miles on crap ice. Yeah, so the chum definitely works. Um... I've never actually tried the chumming myself, but what happens is, and you've probably had it happen, is those lake trout sometimes burp up a bunch of stuff. And then, yeah. you know, it naturally comes down. And then next thing you know, there's more fish in the area. So, I mean, I've tried um, big baits, uh, big live baits and big dead baits on Champlain on the bottom, like they do some in, you know, in some of the Canadian lakes for those big ones. I just can't get anything to bite. Anything off the bottom of the champlain? I don't know. They're just not used to seeing it. Maybe I, I don't I have no clue, but I can't figure it out. <laughs> so yes, it. and I I agree with that on champlain of, of the dozen I don't know half a dozen times, not even that a dozen times fishing for Lake Champlain, Lake Trout. Um, they do not want to eat stuff off the ground. I don't know. Yeah, like I said, I don't know what it is. I don't know if there's just so many lake trout in the lake, and their forage is always moving. And it depends on the lake. So if you switch to an inland lake like, um, you know, Winnipesaukee or even um, what's the Caspian is one we fished last year. Yeah, yeah. Those inland lakes where there's, and I've seen it on Winnipesaukee um, with an underwater camera, they have um, slimy sculpin, which are little tiny, like look like gobies um, that are yeah. scooting on the bottom. And those Lakers will just pin that thing right to the bottom and just slam it. Um, it works really, really well. Yeah, you know, um, the casting was it last year that you were getting tons of your bites, basically putting it right on the bottom. Yeah, making them making them work for it, making them pin it on the bottom, just tapping it in the mud. Um, yeah, it was it was casting and it was pretty fun. Um, we'll see what ice does this year. I got some eyes and ears up in the northern part of New Hampshire. Hopefully, I'm on the ice by January first. But we got not a lot of days left before the the opener here. Yeah, Monday looks like mid 50s so yeah not good. we were him and i were just texting about taking my boat out <laughs> <It's a shame. laughs> yeah which um i should just buy the quick release for my Minn Kota because i take it off in the winter time because the cover doesn't fit on it properly uh, if i just put the quick re release plate on there i could just pop it on and pop it back off and literally just just run with it um 
You just uh, order it off Amazon, have it be here in two days, and put it back on. Yeah, the, <laughs> literally, I just click it on, click it off, because um, I have to undo the screws and unbolt them from, from the front, the bow and stuff. Uh, yeah. Batteries are all charged during the basement. I got to. I took out that stupid wood battery thing, battery tray that I made, and uh, I'm gonna put the batteries underneath and just deal with less tackle. Yeah. Uh, what ideal rod action and length you guys prefer? So I'm running uh, circle tackle. I think the 36 inch uh, full circle rod series, and it's their Laker rod. I'm gonna actually pull up the uh, the length of it right now because I can never remember. Uh, what are you running for Lakers, John? For rods? Um. Yeah. So 36 would be my ideal. I think and even bigger, but you know, it depends what you're fishing in. If you're fishing in a little flip over, it's tough because you don't yeah. really have that that room. But if you're in, uh, you know, like a hub style, you can get away with the longer rods. And, and I, I want something at least medium action. I mean, I would never go less than that. And to be honest, medium is kind of wimpy. You want something that you can rip it. Yeah. You know, having a good hook set. Their mouse is pretty tough. And uh, before I learned that, <laughs> you know, when I just started wing trout fishing through the ice and jigging, anyways, um, I was losing like literally every fish. And I was like, what the heck am I doing? I was like slamming the hook into them. And uh, I said, well, screw this. I'm going to a tackle shop. And I went over to the tackle shop that's close to the bridge, actually. We were talking about the bridge earlier. And I picked up a stout, I think it was like a St. Croix. And it was super overpriced. <laughs> But then I, I went back and then I started landing the fish. Well, not landing them, but putting them on the ice anyways. Yeah. So pretty important to have a pretty good stiff rod because you're not, you're not really trying to feel the, the fish bite anyways. Um, and what, if you, you don't really have to try because they hit so hard anyways. Even with a broom handle, you can probably feel them. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And if you, you know, if you're using a fish binder or whatever, you're going to see them coming in. So you're going to expect it anyway. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't have a preferred brand. Um, I would like, actually, a nice lake trout rod, but I, I can't really find anything. And every time I find something I might want, it's always, like, backordered. <laughs> so <laughs> I've been trying to get a good one for a couple of years, and I can't find anything that great. So. Yeah, you should try the uh, the full circle series I got. And then um, the guy who makes it down in Mass, um, you suggest and I try the their walleye rod, which is a little bit. It's got a little less backbone. It's probably. Well, I think the the lake trout rod is probably like seventy thirty, and the walleye rod is probably like fifty fifty for those, like bend wise, yeah. for yeah. backbone. It'd probably be a little bit better for the Lake Winnipesaukee Lakers that are in the no, nine, those... nineteen to twenty five inch range. Are they all graphite, or is there some glass ones too, or? Uh, they're all graphite right now, carbon fiber or carbon blanks. Um, but he's working on some fiberglass ones and some other stuff. And I actually have two prototype rods on my kitchen table right now for um, uh, jaw jackers that are pretty cool. stout. So those are going to be perfect for um, for Champlain. Yeah, so I was going to say the glass ones work really well for jaw jackers. Yeah, because they don't break basically, and they bend. You know, they, it doesn't matter if they get cold; they're not going to snap. Right. Yeah, the worst worst thing for a carbon fiber blank is to have the thing go off and have nothing be on there because then it's just yeah. full whack into the air. Uh, and that's why I've seen a lot of people like break carbon fiber rods as, as a slack hook set. Yeah, a lot of people are like, oh, it doesn't matter what rod I use for the jaw jackers; they just throw anything on there. <laughs> it doesn't matter yeah. a lot. Don't yeah, don't put your face over it. Basically, and hope for the best. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's getting close to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we do do a lot of Laker fishing. I mean, I, I plan on switching to straight Lakers January 1st. I'm going ice fishing tomorrow somewhere. I don't know where yet. Um, I literally have to re scout for ice, which sucks because um, I probably put on, um, if anybody knows where the notch is in, in New Hampshire, we I drove up there four times already, and that's, you know, uh, 200 miles around more than 200 miles round trip scouting for ice and trying to get up first ice fishing videos and everybody's like where are you getting ice i'm like way the hell up north um and for me in the size of the channel i am 
it's not cost effective for me to do that. That's literally just to get views and, and grow um, in this early season, get everybody excited about ice and, and be safe about it. And I got another brook trout video coming out for you guys soon. So um, yeah, stay on top of John and I's content, of course. So uh, Wyatt told me the third Connecticut people are fishing. Oh, it's, it's got ice already? That's what he said to me today. I talked to him, so. so that's, you know, that's like a two hour, 45 minute run for me. And uh, are those any good as far as size? Uh, third Connecticut has some big ones, but it has a majority of smalls. That's a very small place. It doesn't open until January 1st, but that had that had that has good ice on it for the most part. It had like six or eight inches of ice when I went in the lake down the street had zero. Um, or like 20 minutes away in the same town had zero ice. Okay, yeah. I haven't been up there for like 30 years. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, has, it's it's changed a lot. It's got a lot more. Um, There's more than three people that live in that town now. Yeah, it's getting people are complaining about the taxes. Uh, Detroit River Masters, be careful buying buying the quick disconnect for your trolling motor because it's easy to steal. I'm like, yeah, that's a good point. I wonder if it stays on like you hit like four foot waves continuously. <laughs> well, there's a. Point. There's a little pin that goes in there, but the thing is, is if someone wants to steal it, they just unplug it, pull the pin out, and like literally walk away with a. Right, right now, the new trolling motor, my same trolling motor now is like thirty five hundred to thirty six hundred dollars. Like if you were to go buy a new Sharova Riptide series, I was just pricing it out the other day because mine's getting pretty tired. I mean, I got I don't know how many hours in that freaking thing. It's it's you know past the warranty for sure. Forty one hundred for my Ghost or something like that. Yeah, Last and I want the Altera, I think, next, or whatever one self-deploys. Yeah, something that steers a little more precise. I, I figured that out. My, somehow my uh, my little hockey puck thing, which is the Bluetooth, whatever you want to call it, came disconnected, and John and I were fighting with the... Uh, it wasn't just him. It was me, me and Jason, too, were fighting with the freaking so the wind now? and... Yeah, it's it's way better now. It's just that device was disconnected, so it didn't. It was in that basically. I think Minn Kota says, like you're within ten feet radius or something like that with GPS, and that that device puts you within like a three foot radius or something like that. It puts you way way finer because it's pinging off of that. It's like triangulating. I think that's how it works. Um, yeah, I haven't really done a lot of research on how how exactly it works, but it does help a lot. And that's why most people, when you look at someone's boat and they have it installed right next to their bow, right next to their trolling motor, it says exactly, do not do that. Put it yeah. as far away from electronics. Perfect. Yeah, it defeats the purpose because you're not giving it a second point um, to bounce off of. But yeah, I'm excited for the first, trying to get more content out this year. I'm still working with um, Circle Tackle, Snow Dog, and, uh, cool. and Eskimo. Yeah. And they've all been well, except for Snow Dog. They've all been quiet this year of about bugging me about stuff. I'm like, I don't have any ice to to do a lot of videos on. I'm walking it's on thin ice as it is. It's funny. The last couple of years, I've been like, like, where the heck's the ice at this time of year? But then I think back all the years before. It's it's pretty rare that I used to fish, you know, before Christmas. So I don't think we're behind really. It's just it just gets too excited and you think you're behind. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's there's a couple of ponds here in New Hampshire that just freeze early, and I'm just I'm on those pretty quickly. And that's that's the thing. Uh, and I'm gonna drop my camera down because I can't look up and talk to this microphone at the same time here. So bear with me. John can talk. Is that your storyboard up there for you? Uh, no, that's that's when I Kelsey's whiteboards. I I keep my storyboard stuff in my uh, in my phone if I want to go do something. You know, what? and I'm really frustrated with uh, I'm seeing all these other YouTubers here, and you know, I was talking to Circle Tackle, who's who who was just out at the the big ice fishing show, Clams big ice fishing show out west there, um, in Minnesota, and oh, yeah. you know. Those guys out there don't think we ice fish. They don't like literally don't think we ice fish because the market out here is literally half of New York, 
the north half. Then we have Vermont, which has 600,000 people in it. So John's what, one of the only YouTubers in Vermont. Yeah, not too many. Uh, I'm the only full-time one in New Hampshire, and then there's like six or seven in Maine for whatever reason. Um, and there's just not a ton of, of of people that I mean, there's people that ice fish, but they're they're not taking out thirty foot trailers like they are in Minnesota and Wisconsin and stuff like that. Like they're they are hardcore into ice fishing out there. And so he was saying like, yeah, that these people don't believe that we ice fish out there, and it's just the market out here is just a lot smaller. Um, you know, I'm slowly realizing that, you know, looking at views for people that are, that are out West and they release a video that's identical to mine and it's just way more views. It's just same content. Yeah. It's kind of ridiculous. It's pretty crazy. I mean, I don't put crazy effort into my editing. Like, you know, you put a lot more effort into it, obviously, but I do, I see these guys too. <laughs> Even some of the biggest names, they put out a video and it's like, uh yeah whatever they got like hundred thousand views in like you know day I'm like, how does that happen yeah i know i'm a little jealous of it but i think the, the main thing with those guys is they just started in the game so much earlier and now there's a lot of people that do it but you know over where we are like you said there's not a lot but um in the grand scheme of things what a bit <laughs> yeah i mean we're the only only ones around that are doing doing this i mean there's there's one, there's two channels. There's one full channel in Maine, uh, Joe Holland, who I haven't, haven't talked to yet, uh, that does it out there. And his, his stuff is about ice, ice camping and, you know, staying on the ice for like 10 days straight. And I have a family and that's just not possible. And I think John's wife would, would agree with that. <laughs> I think she would very much agree with it. <laughs> yeah. And we just, I just can't do that. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, I you haven't have ice camped, right? No, I haven't for years. Uh, but yeah, not, you know, not with the little ones now. And, you know, I could, I could plan it out and probably do it, but it could be like, hey, you want to go tonight? <laughs> you know. So. Yeah, I mean, e even then, I have to plan like four or five days in advance. Uh, make sure the weather's not crap, and most of these guys go out when the weather's crap and put themselves in danger for like. Wait for the worst snowstorm in the world so I can get stuck in a blizzard. Uh, yeah. I mean, that sounds fantastic. I mean, I got stuck in some pretty bad wind last time or last year. And, uh, you know, Peter was knocking over and Peter kept blowing up because the wind was so bad. Just couldn't keep the draft out because I was on glare ice. And like that's like, yeah, that's fun for a little while. And then it wasn't. But, you know, I got a kid at home. John's got two and an older one. Um, so we got you know things to go home to, and everybody's been everybody's been giving me so p people that are watching this who are on Facebook, the most toxic place in the world, um, <laughs> besides a nuclear power plant, uh, power plant. Um, you don't need to nag at me for walking on thin ice or John. We oh, yeah, yeah. like I've been doing this for years. John's been doing this for years. We both have float suits. Um, you know I can fish any day of the week. And I made sure that I was fishing with John one of the days when we we're fishing on, on thinner ice. So I'm not alone. Uh, and the other previous video, I took a Sunday off from family day to go fish with my buddy Seth because we knew we were going to lose ice. So, you know, I'm planning around having somebody with me wearing the right protective gear, um, which, you know, I made a video about wearing the right stuff and everybody hates those kind of videos. So I'm not going to do that anymore. Just say, you know, um, Natural selection will choose people to fall through the ice. <laughs> yeah, I saw that post where you, you know where the, the people, I guess, from down south drove a bunch to go to the place that we went, and it's like, well, you know, you're not promoting people to go on the ice, but yeah. um, you, you know, just common sense. Just because you see somebody do it doesn't mean, and especially you, they don't even know what day he went, probably unless he announced it. No, so no. You don't, you don't even know what the weather was like in between the time the video was posted and, and then when they're going. A lot can happen. I've seen many days where I'm on six, eight inches of ice. And this happened like two years ago with a friend of mine. We went to Carmi for perch. Yeah, you were telling me this. Yeah. Slam and, yeah, slam and perch. And he was like, hey, let's go next week. So I ended up waking up late and he, he was with somebody else and he went out. 
And I called him up. I'm like, hey, dude, um, sorry I didn't get up early enough. I'm, I'm headed up. He goes, don't bother. I fell through. And he showed me a picture of the hole, and it was like thin, as thin as could be. But it looked, looked thick still. And that was like two days of semi-warm weather. It destroyed all that ice. So, it, it can go quick. Yeah, you always have to be prepared to check the ice yourself. You got to basically have the mindset that nobody's been on this ice, so I need to check it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. Like you're the first person to go out, and that's the way you should have that mindset. Yeah, and I, you know, I didn't have a spud bar for years, and I started watching, you know, these other guys use spud bars, and uh, John was the one who taught me. Uh, who took me ice fishing for the first time and it was a miserable experience the first time uh we had to hike down a mountain on to i think you know one of the connecticut river setbacks and uh yeah it was the day before he's like hey you want to go ice fishing i'm like sure i was like what, what do i need i'm like i need you need a an ice fishing pole and i so i went to dick's sporting goods brought this 24 inch broomstick which i still have which i've broken the tip off like three times so it's probably like 20 inches now um and didn't catch anything while John's running around with a Vex hammering crappy. And so, you know, I was kind of like, oh, I gotta, I gotta beat this guy at some point. So uh, now I have lots of time and lots of money invested in ice fishing gear. And uh, I beat him once last year, but we we didn't fish that much last year together. We, uh, it's funny though that same place I've taken many people at that place and did the same thing to them. Many people have said. Why bother using one of those, you know, micro vex wires, whatever? Yeah, I can catch fish, doesn't matter, whatever. Okay, okay. So, you know, they go down there, and I got my 25, and they're still at one. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, it's like, yeah. then they go right off the next day and buy one. <laughs> it's like, yep. Yeah. So, yeah, it, does it, makes, it makes a big difference on knowing what's down there. I mean, I was, I was super excited about catching three inch long perch sight fishing them with a spring bobber uh, yeah. on uh, a couple of the lakes in, in a couple of ponds here, there in uh, Vermont when I first started ice fishing. And what really got me hooked was that one lake trip we took down by Crown Point. I mean, that was the kind of a turning point. I'm like, yeah, I want to do this more. Skiing's too freaking expensive, which I used to like downhill ski. It's kind of freaking crazy. Snowmobiling's even more expensive. Uh, it's like, <laughs> It's like when I, got, I first got with Andrea, she says, oh, I, I'm a member of, you know, the country club. You know, golf is really expensive. It's an expensive, expensive hobby. And I'm like, hold my beer. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, exactly. let me show you the, you know, $80,000 bow and all this, you know, $50,000 worth of tackle and stuff. Yeah. It's like, there's no comparison. Golf, I could play. I could be a member of 30 golf places, you know. Oh, for the years. price of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, lifetime membership still wouldn't add up to that. I mean, some fancy places, but you know, have, have you seen that new meme? It's like, uh, you know, you the wife leaves you a note says, "Put your most expensive um, suit on and let's let's go." And then you you come out and you got your whole striker ice suit or your Eskimo yeah. suit on. I'm like, my suit. Luckily, I'm I'm uh, you know I'm, I'm working with Eskimo, obviously, but the superior suit's a thousand dollar suit. So a thousand dollar suit, two hundred dollar boots, and then you have to wear a step underneath that, uh, and then you have the you know live scope on the ice. I mean, I'm walking on the ice with a ton of money, so I don't want to lose that shit. Um, well, then you put your snow dog on there. Exactly. A yeah, a it's of it's a lot of money, and it and I'm gonna do a video this year. And actually, Jay Siemens just did a video on like how to ice fish cheap, like take my cheapest rod my hand auger and I have bought a sonar that, that you connect to your phone. It's like literally a hundred bucks and you can sync it to your phone and I'll go catch, you know, it's going to be me, me against you with active target and let's see how many we can get. Like you can do it cheap. You can do it expensive. Um, and I actually did a video a long time ago, I got uh, cheap versus expensive ice fishing gear and I actually did pretty well. Um, I got a couple comments here. It says I get crap from my wife. I've fallen in a couple of times, but it's been my fault. And I'm only fishing less than five feet of water for rainbows. Yeah, see, that's fine. Uh, keep promoting safety. You have to have greater respect for the ice than what people may believe. There are so many variables that can happen before a blink of an eye. Yeah, I mean, I tell people I wear the ice picks. I always tell people where I'm going like that. Um, that font's like size 
too, uh, so it's hard to read. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've done safety videos before, and no one wants to sit down and watch a safety video. It's kind of like the OSHA safety video at work. Everybody's just trying to pry their eyes open. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, you can only you can only do so much. Um, but see, seeing you know, seeing me, John, uh, other YouTubers wear a a float suit, uh, which I thought was silly because when I actually used to go fishing with John, we would go to Champlain or something like that, and it would be a bunch of people I call them blue smurfs because they claim was the first one to really come out with a float suit or I don't even know, I don't even know if they floated back then did they they, weren't float, no, they, weren't, they didn't float back then no yeah they didn't float and you know you just look like a giant smurf because it was just a blind giant blue suit uh which looks really funny I'm like those guys are silly as I'm wearing like wool <laughs> pants and and long johns and sweatpants and I had like nine layers on I used to just sit on a bucket and uh and jig for lake because i was actually literally just looking at a i had two buckets with ice fishing gear uh pictures when i first started and now i mean i have stuff in the basement stuff in my office right now stuff in the garage stuff in the yeah, truck <laughs> yeah it's it's a little ridiculous i, I remember uh, I first time you know first probably year ice fishing i used to have one of those little wooden poles where you wrap the line. Oh yeah, yeah. I haven't used one of those yet. I got someone that wanted me to, to give me give me one. I'm like, no thanks. Yeah, I remember doing that. Like, this sucks. <laughs> and I, I didn't even want to ice fish for the longest time. I was like, why do people do this? But then when you know things started, you know, technology got a little bit better, a little bit more comfortable with the new, you know, shanties and stuff like that. I used to wear shoes out in the ice <laughs> back when I started. Nice. Regular shoes, dude. I'm, Oh yeah, crazy. But when you love, you know, you love fishing. You do quite anything to get out there. Yeah, and uh, both both Don and I have talked about like, you know, what would we, you know, would you want to move south and and fish in a boat year round? And I would have said no two years ago. And now that I have live scope and the ability to like cover water, and I know more about fishing. Um, you know, ice fishing is just a pastime until open water boat fishing season started. Because uh, I'm 35. How old are you, John? Uh, you know, 44. <laughs> 44. Ice uh, fishing. So I'll I'll get on the ice at you know six seven o'clock in the morning, and I'll get off at like. Sometimes I'll do an overnight, which is you know 24 hours. That absolutely kicks the shit out of your body. Like I'm just exhausted. And it just beats you up um, compared to spending eight hours in the boat where you're just driving around and just in the, in the sun. You can, you know, you're not wearing 19 layers. Everything's so much easier. Uh, if you're not ice fishing hard enough, if, if you're not breaking something while you're ice fishing, you're not ice fishing hard enough because just things just break because it's cold. Yeah. Honestly, like you said, it's kind of a pastime to get back to open water. I feel like that the same way too. I just, the only thing I really dislike, and it's not the weather. The thing I hate is, say I set up on a on a spot, and it's just not happening. A lot of times I'll find myself just sitting there longer just because I don't want to pack up everything and move again. Yeah, you but, better you know, just waiting it out. You get the snow dog, so that should help a little bit. But with me pulling everything, you talk about a miserable day. Like remember that day we went up that hill at the Connecticut River? Yeah, that sucked. Yeah, at the end of the day, you're hurt. Doing yeah, that. and that's literally what a couple hundred yard pole. Yeah. yeah, I told I told two old guys up there a couple years ago with my snow dog. You know, I'm, I I was so I pulled them like, hey, you might pull my my stuff up. I'm like, sure, I just you know I can't pull you up on it, but you just put the yeah. sled in the back. And these guys are like six. These are the guys keeping the four inch perch or the four inch yeah. uh, crappy. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, I'm hoping these guys don't have a heart attack from just walking up the damn hill. I mean, they were old. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nothing against old guys. It's just I was, you know, worried about having to save these guys on the way on the way back. But uh, yeah, that was a that was a. I just caught a bunch of massive perch. Um, that was before you know live scope. And you know, one of the my favorite things about ice fishing is the ability to use electronics and vertical jig because you can you can do that on a boat if you have spot lock. It's really hard to do that without spot lock. And I like I'm a visual guy. I like sight fishing if I'm, I'm fly fishing and using a sonar is my type of sight fishing uh, and so having live scope is just fantastic uh, on the ice 
off the ice. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you ever tried it without the live scope, like Laker jigging at Champlain. Yeah, well, like, well that first time you and I went. It was, it's brutal. Yeah. To try to use the tow motor by yourself because you don't know really where you are. Yeah. If you're out in the open water, so you're just trying to stay over the top of those fish. It's pretty tough. So then you, you know, your your lure is 50 feet away from you at an yeah. angle. It's it's insane. It's really yeah. hard. And now with the spot lock, you can you can literally be in three three foot waves and not even move, which is you know you obviously know that. But yeah, no, I spent uh, what uh, six hours off the spawning spot on Champlain and didn't didn't move in like seven foot waves. It was brutal. <laughs> and I only caught yeah. like three. Uh, that didn't make a video, guys. But uh, make another question here. Will hold on. Will the ice shift a lot in your area? A lot of guys float down the lake in our area every year. Yeah, we don't have ice sheets that break off and float away. Uh, not where I am. Not in Winnipesaukee. I have been on some sketchy ice on Champlain. That's like the winds blowing into um, not mallets, but uh, what's the St. Albans Bay where the ice is going up and down? That's probably the weirdest uh... ice I've been on. I was on uh, Central Champlain like four or five years ago, and a couple hundred yards north of me, you can see the ice doing this. Yeah, like no thanks. Yeah. The, the ice is, you know, eight, eight, ten inches thick still, and it still flexes enough where it can do that. It's insane. Yeah, I mean, I, I it's I saw, well, I, I filmed a short or, a, you know, a TikTok or Instagram reel earlier this year on an inch and a half in ice. Uh, and that got like 1.6 million views basically, but the amount of flex in the ice is ridiculous. But what he's talking about is, you know, they go out to Michigan or, or yeah, these other awesome. lakes where the whole sheet breaks off and they literally float away and they have to get yeah. the coast guard involved <laughs> and a helicopter to get them back. I've heard of that happening on Champlain, but it's pretty rare. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't freeze enough to make it break off in the middle, in the, the broad part of the lake. Right. Yeah. It's usually in days. And it's usually not the you know, deepest water in the world, so you don't really hear much about it. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't happen that uh that often. We got uh, still seven people. I think the the count's always wrong. But we got seven people on right now, and I plan on doing this every I'm guessing every Wednesday or Thursday for the rest of the season here. Uh, John might not be on every time, but I'm gonna try to get different people on to chat about ice fishing. Kind of do kind of a podcast style. And I'm gonna try to get it so we can share uh, screens here. John's gonna stay on the call after, so I see if I can switch this thing here now. Um, yeah, you should figure out how to a way to maybe so I can see the questions too. Maybe I don't know. It's not the biggest deal in the world, but yeah, no, I'm seeing them through my phone through YouTube, okay. so I'm watching myself live. So there's a huge delay. The questions are live, but you and I are, okay. are delaying like a lot. Um, uh, Cassis whiteboard open jam. Yeah, I'm trying to get you and I on the same screen to broadcast to YouTube. Uh, so I can I can do it on my screen, but I don't think it's casting to YouTube. But I'll, I'll, right now, I'm seeing both you and I at the same time. Yeah, I, uh, I have to, I've been seeing you and me both at the same time. This whole thing. This whole yeah, time. so I'll have, I'll have to figure out how to do it on, uh, or if it's even possible. If not, I'll just ditch the software and go from there but yeah um yeah i don't have i uh, told my wife i would plan a calendar out for what i plan on doing this year for for videos i plan on doing a lot more laker how-to videos um to get everybody out on the ice catching their first lake trout because you know a big a big problem with people and catching lake trout or even burbot right is is having access to either a boat or getting onto those spots that are on the lake um, cool. And ice fishing is the best way to do it because, you know, I can go the exact same distance as someone who wants to walk with us. You know, I have a snow dog who wants to walk four or five miles or choose different access points around the lake. Uh, same with Champlain, right? There's only so many access points you can get on without going over private land. Um, but yeah, if you want to catch your first laker, ice fishing is the way to do it. Um, and it's, you know, I, I coached a couple of people last year. They watched my videos. They, they bought baits for me. And they're like, uh, this is super addicting to see something scream from the bottom 60 feet and chase your jig right to the surface. And then like, oh, shit, what do I do now? Uh, it's an addicting rush, um, which is pretty cool. 
I, yeah, I don't think there's any other fish like it, even in the summer. I mean, I bass fish a lot. I crappie fish, trout fish, whatever. But the, watching those lake is, I mean, scream almost as fast as you can even reel. Yeah. And, you know, have that anticipation of seeing them just like right there and then all of a sudden bang. It's, I don't know. I don't know if there's any other freshwater fish that is more exciting to watch do that. You know what I mean? Like, you, you might see a bass stream over a little bit and crush something. Like, you know, I've been using some top water baits and watching them come up the bottom and getting ready for them to hit the top water. That's really cool. But, yeah. Consistently coming from like zero to 70 feet up, say, and then bang. It's, it's pretty amazing. It's really addictive. It's it's pretty sweet. Uh, how's it going? IX Mortisol Gaming. I'm not sure. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, but they're from uh, Meredith, New Hampshire. Just some new that just hopped on. I tried to share onto the uh, the Facebook pages, um, and I, I got kicked. Huh? I think I bought a boat in Meredith back back in the day. Oh yeah, I think I used fish out of there. Marine well, I, huh? Marine USA. I think that's where it was. Oh, maybe I don't. Yeah, I don't know any of the marinas around there. Some boat uh, place. Yeah, it's on the western side of the lake. Um, but yeah, I boat out of there quite often. And I, if I can ice fish out of there this year, that'd be freaking fantastic. But we'll we'll see. Been looking on Facebook Marketplace for a new boat. Oh boy. I need, I want an eighteen I'm foot something. He's not watching, right? No, she, well, her and I were talking about the other day. I'm like, so, oh, well, you know, Ryan's got the new boat. I'm like, that's his, Ryan's dad's boat. Um, okay. Hopefully he's watching. I can give him crap for that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping it. So if anybody in the comments um, wants to find me on either Instagram or Facebook, so Joshua Treadwell on both of those on Facebook or Bendit Fishing on Facebook or Instagram, uh, and has somebody who wants to talk on this kind of like podcast youtube style and wants to chit chat about ice fishing uh send me a dm and then we'll we'll get them on the thing i plan on doing this once a week um until you know probably mid-march and mid-march i probably will be up with john on champlain casting for lakers on the boat or on sebago one or the other because or, or saturday yeah or this saturday um which if i wasn't buying a christmas tree i would ask or, or christmas we're actually Going to the national forest and cutting one down for five bucks. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah cool. Get a little Charlie Brown tree. Yep. Whatever. Yeah, whatever uh, works. So I think in the future it'd be nice maybe to have some topics lined up. Yeah, I did a, a couple years ago. I did one a whole one about just aqua underwater cameras and stuff like that. Ch chatted about that, but you know, um, I don't. How, you don't listen to a lot of podcasts, do you? Not a lot, but yeah, some of them are just like they just want to listen to people kind of BS about whatever, just about ice fishing in general. Um, yeah, I feel like you know you have a topic, and then, yeah, you go down the rabbit hole probably a little bit, anyways. Yeah, but you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah. I just, I this is the first one, and we'll see if if I can keep going. I mean, I I had quite a few people. I can go check my analytics from a couple of years ago. Um, and if if I get good ice, yeah, I'd get you know, almost two hundred views on the ones last year, uh, four hundred on the one for New Year's, three hundred, and people people watch this after the fact. So once I continue to do it, and then you know we can come back on and and chat. One of the ideas for today was like, oh, tell me about your first ice fishing experience, which I kind of just touched on anyways. But uh, I try to keep it to an hour. We've been on here for for an hour. Yeah. Just, yeah, I mean, once the ice starts happening, we start <laughs> being able to fish for more to talk about, right? <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. I've also, yeah, I wanted to, you know, talk about, I've also wanted to do this, like, every time I go ice fishing, just have, like, a debrief, like, having a live, talking about, oh, this is where, where I fished, or not exactly where I fished, but, uh, um, you know, talk about what the conditions were, how the ice was, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, maybe on the next next few here. And little, I, I think I did it twice last year. Let me actually see. So last year was 2022. I we'll did one, two, three, four, five. Were you at like Connecticut Lakes or something? Yeah, that's up in Pittsburgh. That's my. Uh, I plan on doing that again this year. You know, if I have, 
if I can get onto some good burbot spots this year where I can actually ice fish at night, uh, cause we can't target lake trout during the, uh, the nighttime. Um, I'll go live then too. And just bur uh, burbot fish live, which is pretty sick. Those videos do do pretty well. And this is, you know, I don't, I make some money off of these guys off these live streams. Um, I'll, I'll give John the, the five cents that I make off his live streams. Yeah. Just mail it. Yeah. Just mail, mail you a mail you nickel. Um, it's more for, for chatting with you guys because, um, John probably doesn't feel the same way I do is like, I'm putting out content nonstop and, you know, I get a thousand views here and 700, 800, 4,000, like they're just out into the, the abyss and I don't get to talk with people, uh, about ice fishing. So I've always wanted to do this kind of like just chat about ice fishing, chat about whatever. And I plan on having a couple of YouTubers on when I get them, get in contact with them. One of them doesn't have service at their house. So we got to, uh, he's got to like drive somewhere to like a McDonald's to get Wi-Fi. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah. One of the main guys. So yeah. Food. yeah, we can do a whole, uh, you know, once January 1st starts, you, we, can, we can have you back on and talk about like literally just bring all of our tackle for Lake Trout and just kind of do that. That'd be pretty sick. I think. Yeah, definitely. I can, I can line up some stuff and show people kind of my go-to's and, Talk about you know like uh, you know preferences of tackle like you know your line and rods reels and blah 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 whatever yeah talk about you know how to find the Lakers in the uh, in the winter too which it's um it's easy but I honestly I think it's a little bit harder than open water for sure open water yeah open water they're more concentrated you know and in the winter they can just go anywhere they want basically so. Uh, it could be good, though, because you know you don't have to go necessarily to the exact perfect spot like you have to in the summer. You can kind of just wing it and just be like, "Oh, there's Lakers here, cool," <laughs> you know, because they're just everywhere sometimes. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, they're definitely cut. like what people don't realize is like, "Oh, uh, Lakers are down deep." Like some of my biggest Lakers have been caught in. In, well, especially on Champlain, caught in 10 feet of water in the springtime. And so springtime water temps is pretty much the same as, you know, it is during ice fishing season. They can go anywhere they want in the ice fishing season. Anywhere. Literally. Uh, yeah. Caspian, Caspian, I caught one in one foot of water when I was smelt fishing. Yep. It happens so, quite often on Winnie, too. Literally, literally, the dorsal fin is probably scraping on the bottom of the ice. Yep, they don't literally don't care, and they can be anywhere they want. That the, their water temperature is pretty much all the same, except for below the thermocline, which they don't have no no desire to be down there. I mean, they they will if baits down there. But um, one thing I've learned over the last even this year about lake trout is they do not give a shit about water temp as much as people think they do. As long as they have food, and there's no food somewhere else, they will go up into 73, 74 degree water. And they'll come up and eat, and they'll go right back down to cold water yeah. to cool off. They don't. Yeah. As long as they don't stay up there in long periods of time. Yeah, they. Yeah, you can find lake trout in the middle of summer. I found them in twenty feet this summer. Yeah, shocking. I, we've seen we've seen them uh, breaking surface too. So yeah, I want to try to get one on top water this year and in, in the spring in March. Yeah. I yeah, think it's possible. You gotta, what, you gotta figure out what to use. I don't know. Some kind of minnow bait, probably. I'm sure, but I I think if we if we get live scope on them, and you bring them, like if you cast out with like an attracting bait and you bring them up towards the surface, and then I'm like right beside you with like a whopper plopper or a or just a normal popper, I think they would hit it because they were they were rolling on the surface last time. So yeah, I think it might be tough to have them actually to hook them up though because I don't oh, know 100 yeah how they're you know how they're vision is looking up yeah you know certain fish can, can really hit something above them but they're probably gonna miss it a lot is my guess but yeah just add more hooks hey who who uh <laughs> leave in the comment we got 10 people along we have a couple more people to just hop on if you want us want us to keep talking just let us know and we'll i mean i don't know how much time you got john but oh geez i don't know i got uh what time is it nine nine i could only stay on for another three hours probably at the max <laughs> yeah i'm talking Tuck everybody's ears off. We can stay on a few more minutes if you guys want. And I have one person to say say goodbye here. Um, and, 
it's funny uh app facebook absolutely hates any sort of youtube links they just completely demote it um which is annoying as heck so trying not to use use facebook as a as a device um and i forgot to go post a story on instagram saying i was going live so um try to do the same thing and i think uh, one of the guys you just fished with is they're going live tonight. Real Northern Bass guys. Oh yeah, they are. I, mean, I think they probably already are. To be honest with you. Yeah, they're live right now. They get a they get a New Hampshire fishing biologist on right now. Oh nice. And I was trying not to do it on the night they do it. I think they they do it on Wednesdays. I was trying to I was trying for Thursdays. I think. Yeah, Thursdays. On average, would be better for me, just because I work every other Wednesday. So there are some days, some Wednesdays that I'd be probably a little bit more tired and less willing to talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this is late for me too. I gotta I gotta pack the rest of my gear. I got stuff charging right now for uh, for scouting for ice tomorrow. But yeah, they they get a live stream, and there's there's I mean there's a lot more bass guys than there is ice fishing folks. So uh, yeah, well, I'm a bass guy usually, but yeah. Honestly, All right. I find myself less and less interested in ice fishing <laughs> the more I go. But yeah, uh, I am somewhat new to ice fishing. Lakers spent many years pike fishing, but it's such a rush chicken for a lake trip. I the best thing is locating Lakers on or near humps. Yeah, humps are humps are like their their best known structure. And I found some in humps that come all the way up to five feet. I mean, any sort of hump. Even you know, yeah. John's got a spot that's. It's ninety. Was it ninety feet deep and then one hundred and twenty on each side? It's as long as that's a hump, they're freaking on it. Like they just can't yeah. help themselves. Yeah, I find that uh, a lot of the lakers in the morning and then in the evening or on the cloudy, cloudy days are on top of the hump. And then when it gets bright out, usually they they kind of hit off on the sides a little yeah, bit. Yeah, slide off. They slide off the edge a little bit. But you know, it's pretty easy to find them. I think. Yeah. Uh, it seems like one of the easiest fish to find to me. I don't know. And don't get me wrong, there's there's been a couple times where I go out and they come to get the bite, but they're still there, you know. But uh, I don't know. I I probably find those easier than I'd find a school bass. And that's saying a lot because bass aren't the hardest fish to find a lot of times. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, there's there's probably more straggler bass than there are straggler lake trout like rarely oh, do you see a lone like every once in a while you'll see a lone wolf lake trout and it's usually a bigger one um in my opinion especially during the summertime ice fishing season like they can be a lone wolf just cruising around and i've, I've seen them just chill off shelves and stuff like that but yeah, yeah very seen, true bass are definitely more you'll get more loners probably on, on average for sure yeah it's almost yeah it's almost rare to find big schools of bass you might get five or six together but very you don't see like like the big schools of crappie on that pond you know, just right. <laughs> no yeah i wish i mean lake trout are like that uh not not that yeah. big of school but just that size of things but i think we should uh go ahead oh it's just like you kind of like 17 on your screen at one time this year or something like that oh like yeah one time. i think Probably the max I've had. Probably the max I've had is like twenty five, I think, on live scope. I mean, that's that's within a fifty foot circle underneath me or sixty yeah. foot circle. And those fish, those are fish are pre spawn. They just don't want to move. There's like a stagnant line, and they just don't move. But uh, yeah, and you want to move ten feet, and then they're freaking gone by the time you get over there. It's like what the fuck uh shouldn't shouldn't be swearing on live but all right uh i think everybody's done let's plan these things for for thursdays uh because tonight's actually date nine i think i thought you were available more tonight than you were with wednesdays but um oh. and i'm like my plan is to go ice fishing tomorrow so i was going to be tired for tomorrow but i can always chat for another hour all right yeah. so don't know to find out for uh scouting <laughs> yeah i'll let you know what i find out i get um, there's still some ice above the notch. I just got a text message about an hour ago saying there's there's ice up there, but I don't feel like driving all up there for 12 inch rainbows, 15 inch rainbows. Yeah, I know. If that's the only option, I'll do it. 
the slot now in 15 you know, 20 for me maybe so, yeah good. i'll i'll text you the spot when we get off the phone get off the call mm -hmm. all right thanks guys for watching uh make sure you check out john's channel and my channel obviously hit the subscribe button um it's pretty easy i'm sorry there are ads on this this thing i can't control them most of the time because youtube just puts on ads on everything now they used to on lives they used to be one in the beginning and one at the end um but yeah that's how i how i make my money you know i'll split that with john <laughs> I'll, I'll make a deal with you i'll give you i'll let my 700 subscribers subscribe to you and you let your 14 or something go to me or 15 or something. yeah fifteen thousand. <laughs> yeah make sure you guys subscribe to john's channel uh i was just gonna read somebody else's channel uh woods and weeds woods and then the letter n weeds outdoors um or look up lake champlain bass fishing or something like that on google and you'll you'll or youtube you'll find them um or mainly mainly lake trout either him or i will show up and um or most of my videos and we'll we'll see you guys next week the next thursday is the plan i'll i'll see if i can get a uh another youtuber on if i can it'll just be me chatting and if john's free i'll, I'll bring him on just to it's weird it's just talking to myself call. and waiting for comments to come through so yeah yeah, it's it's definitely a lot smoother with a couple of people, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> I can invite as many people as I want on this too, so I don't have, think I have a limit, and there's no time limit either. So we can have we can have four people on. I just got to figure out how to do um, you and I because right now you and I are just every time I talk, the screen switches to me, and then you talk, it switches switches to you. Oh, okay. So it's probably really annoying for somebody to uh, to watch us right now. And so right. we're gonna say goodbye, but. I'm gonna mess with the screen real quick. Don't don't hang up, John. I'm just gonna see if I can get you and I to show up at the same time. I might have to Google it. I don't know how to do it first. Show more live stream, record, whiteboard. Window entire screen. Share. There you go. Now it's uh, now you're sharing. So that just put. Now I have now I have six of us. Oh yeah, I can see that. So that's mirroring my screen, which is not what I want to do. You can double tap to pin up to three people at one time. This only affects what you see. Okay. Interesting. So I can pin you and I can pin me. Does that work? Yeah. Now I have, to, I have to wait 20 seconds for the other screen, the actual YouTube, to update and see what it says. Okay. Because right now it's still us back talking. <laughs> huh. Wait for it. Should be any moment now. Come on. Yeah, for those who are we got eight, eight people still on, but they're like this and they're they're lagging behind here. Um, yeah, see you guys next week, and I'll text you, John, about uh about the ice that I know about at least. Same pond, and I've already fished it twice. Actually, I fished it three times. Um, I guess skunked once because I only had about thirty minutes to fish. So, and I got a new prototype tube that was just invented for me. And it's not finalized yet. But take, uh, don't okay. don't uh, lake or two. Look at this thing. Oh, that looks like a flying lure. It is a flying lure. Oh, okay. It's it's basically a tube with wings on it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I, out of all the gimmick type things, I think that that one works the best. <laughs> I thought I seriously, I've caught all kinds of. I caught brown trout on it and. White River before. On a tube? No, on the flying lure, the real flying lure. Let me look. I just saw an ad for the, uh, the banjo minnow. Yeah. <laughs> no, but really, the flying lure works actually really well. Send me, send me a link to that because I'm Googling it right now flying lure. Hold on. It's. Wow, that thing's really delayed. 
You and I are really tight. It looks like a, a flat too, basically. Like a little bit of wing to it. It's got a special weighted uh, jig inside of it. So you pull it away from the fish, and when you release the tension, it goes right back to the fish. So that's the whole gimmick. Huh. And it forces its way right to their mouth. Yeah, so it's it's not... It's not working properly, so we're gonna have to mess with it. But all right, you'll figure it out. I'll figure it out next time. But you had to, you had to get a link from me via email, so that's good to know for the next person. Uh, I use the uh, the one group messenger. Okay, all right, so that works too. You pop me to download the, the app. Yeah. And I had to wait for the app to load and then uh, accept a few things and. About it. Okay. Yeah, All right. Thanks, John. I will text you when we get off of this right now. All right. Go. Bye, everybody.